Imagine a world where demons are immortal yet angels, the very essence of purity and light can perish. In the fantastical realms of games like Diablo, this dichotomy plays out with stark vividness. Demons, those harbingers of ruin, resurrect time and again, defying the finality of death. In stark contrast, angels, despite their celestial origin and harmonious purpose, face mortality. When an angel falls, they do not return as the same entity. Instead, a new angel is born, distinct and separate. This curious imbalance begs the question, why are these beings of light and order not granted the same immortality as their dark counterparts? When an angel falls in battle, the heavens do not merely weep, they lose a part of their eternal song. Angels, those luminous beings of light and sound, are not born as mortals are, but are instead created by the crystal arch through a celestial symphony known as the light song. This miraculous event occurs only during moments of perfect harmony in the high heavens, making each angel a rare and precious entity. The process of angelic creation is bound by the finite power of Anu, the primal god from whom all creation sprang. This means that the number of angels that can exist is inherently limited. Each angel embodies a unique aspect of Anu's power, crafted from the divine vibrations of the crystal arch itself. They are beings of order and justice, designed to maintain balance against the chaos of demons. However, the mortality of angels presents a stark contrast to their demonic adversaries. When an angel dies, they do not return as the same entity. Instead, a new angel is birthed from the arch, distinct and separate from their predecessor. This is not a simple rebirth, but the creation of an entirely new being with different memories and identity. Consider the fate of Malthael, once the Archangel of Wisdom, whose disappearance and subsequent actions led to his downfall. His death was absolute, he did not return. Similarly, if Tyriel, the former Archangel of Justice, were ever to fall, he too would not come back as the Tyriel we know. His return after the destruction at Mount Ariat remains an extraordinary anomaly, not the norm. This impermanence among the angelic hosts introduces a profound vulnerability. Each angelic death is a definitive loss, removing a unique voice from their harmonious choir forever. Unlike demons whose essence can be trapped and reborn, the death of an angel is a significant and irreplaceable loss to the heavenly chorus. On the flip side, demons seem to have a pesky habit of coming back, no matter how many times they are defeated. Take Diablo, for instance. This primeval embodiment of terror has been vanquished and had his soul stone shattered, yet he persistently claws his way back into existence. Similarly, the Butcher, a demonic force of nightmares, refuses to stay down, reappearing time and again despite repeated defeats. What makes demons so resilient? Their immortality hinges on the containment of their souls. Unlike mere physical destruction, Truly ending a demon's menace requires their souls to be trapped. This is no simple feat. It underscores a fundamental aspect of the demonic nature. Evil, as represented by these demons, is not just a force to be fought. It is a pervasive and enduring presence that cannot be simply killed. This concept extends beyond individual demons. It echoes the timeless struggle between good and evil. Demons, embodying the darker aspects of existence such as hatred, deceit and despair, are not entities that can be completely eradicated. Like the emotions they personify, these demonic beings can be suppressed or controlled, but never fully destroyed. This relentless resurrection paints a grim picture of an endless war where darkness refuses to yield. What does this imbalance between immortal demons and mortal angels tell us about the nature of good and evil? In the realm of storytelling, particularly within the cosmic battles depicted in games and myths, we often encounter demons as immortal beings. This immortality can be seen as a metaphor for the enduring, ever-resilient nature of evil. Evil, much like these demons, seems to rise again no matter how many times it is defeated, suggesting a persistent force that challenges the balance of the universe. On the other hand, angels, those paragons of virtue and light, are depicted as mortal, their mortality might symbolize the fragility of goodness and purity in the world. Unlike evil, good must be nurtured and protected. It does not simply endure on its own, but requires renewal and defense. 
This could reflect a human understanding that maintaining goodness is an ongoing struggle, one that needs constant vigilance and effort. This dichotomy raises profound questions about our perceptions of good and evil. Is evil truly an indestructible force, or is it the challenge of defeating it that defines our morality? And is the mortality of goodness what makes it truly precious? Perhaps it is the very vulnerability of good that elevates its value, making every act of kindness, every gesture of love, a precious commodity in the economy of human actions. In this light, the eternal conflict between demons and angels is not just a battle, it is a dance of philosophical contrasts, reflecting our deepest fears and highest hopes. Perhaps in our stories and myths, we echo the belief that every act of good, every moment of light, is a hard-fought victory against an ever-present darkness. Now, armed with this knowledge of celestial battles and cosmic imbalance, what do you think? Dive into the fray and share your insights. Reflect on the mortality of angels versus the undying nature of demons. Is this narrative device just a fascinating tale? Or does it mirror deeper truths about our own existence? Consider the fairness, the symbolism, and the impact of such eternal conflicts on our understanding of life and death. Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Do you find this celestial rule of mortality versus immortality as puzzling and intriguing as I do?